So I am just on a tirade here on YouTube to try to expose how many people really do use steroids or performance enhancing drugs in all sports, all spaces, all professions to really clue you in and just in general how widespread and rampant performance enhancing drug usage really is. The fact that it is illegal in the United States is kind of an oddity. On this channel, I am absolutely not a fan of people taking performance enhancing drugs if there's not a use for them to take it, but I do preach and really hope that one day we have the freedom to use our bodies as we want to and part of doing that is to take drugs that definitely can harm you in the long run and therefore i produce educational content and i try to show you the dark sides of these things more often than i show you the success of them because there's a lot less successing people <laughs> than there is man losing people there's a lot of losing that we have in people who use steroids in fact a, a ton and I've talked about the selection bias we experience, which is like the success bias online with people who use steroids as you see them as really successful, jacked and handsome, but not actually going to happen to you most likely. Now, what am I talking about here today? Well, would you believe me if curlers, yes, curlers, you know that's sport I'm talking about, right? You rub the ice really hard like you're doing something inappropriate and a puck thing flies down i did it one time in my life actually it was pretty fun flies down the uh it's a stone it's a stone flies down the ice you have to knock other stones out of the way and try to get your stone in the center of a bullseye really interesting stuff highly competitive apparently so competitive so that it's in the olympics would you believe that a curler is using performance enhancing drugs or rather SARMs? and let me even up the ante a bit more would you believe a female curler was busted for using performance enhancing drugs? Well, you better be damn sure that that is a reality. Curler Brianne Harris awaiting fast decision of doping appeal after CAS hearing. So basically she's a Canadian. God, I already feel bad for her just hearing that. But she had a blood level of Legandrol that popped hot on her blood test. Harris tested positive on January 24th for trace amounts of a prohibited substance, Legandrol, in an out of competition doping control test. She received the results on February 15th, the eve of the team's opening game at the Scotties Tournament of Hearts. A CAS spokesperson previously confirmed via an email that the procedure 24ADD95 World Curling versus Brienne was before the court's anti doping division but no other information was available. Harris could be facing a ban up to four years. However, there is flexibility for any potential sanction to be adjusted depending on the facts of the case and other factors. She also came back positive with the B test. I've explained this before as well. In WADA's testing, and really if a doping agency is good and they're testing appropriately, they have an A and a B sample. So the athlete, when tested positive for whatever drug, will have their A sample having been tested, and then the B sample is kept in storage so that if they want to appeal the positive test, they can have the B sample tested. In this case, she appealed it, got the B sample tested, and it also had Legandrol in it. And of course, it goes to say that Fowler, which I'm assuming is her representative, said as best as can be determined at this time miss harris was unknowingly exposed to a banned substance through bodily contact and i don't know about you but that sounds <laughs> really bullshit to me <laughs> it sounds really bullshit so looking at legandrol what is it exactly well, you might have heard about it because I talk shit about them all the time, but it's a selective androgen receptor modulator. It was a drug that was under development for the treatment of muscle atrophy in certain cases with diseases that would induce muscle atrophy. Of course, kind of like all of these drugs, even anabolic steroids are produced in the first place to treat some form of muscle atrophy atrophy. Now LGD4033 is the other name of the drug that you'll typically see on peptide websites it has been shown very clearly to aid in building lean mass and distribute fat mass a bit differently. But that being said, it hasn't been approved for human use and therefore isn't being produced on any sort of large scale or by any company at a pharmaceutical level, nor would anybody just have it out and about for any particular reason unless they bought it from a peptide website. What's very interesting, and I could be wrong here, but based on the research that I've done previously and currently looking at in front of me, Legandrol's molecular weight would be far too heavy to be absorbed via a transdermal administration, which means on your skin like transdermal testosterone is like a cream you rub it on your skin it gets absorbed into your skin ideally you rub it on your scrotum but people rub it anywhere i guess 
allegedly. And what this compound is doing is it needs to be required to be taken by mouth, or at least this is what clinical trials have shown us. There's never been a clinical trial on a mammal where they hadn't had it adjusted by oral administration, humans or not. Now, this isn't a good compound. It might sound interesting and unique and novel, but it's not a great compound. It still shuts down endogenous testosterone production. There is a copium of side effects with it that would include lowering good cholesterol, which I hate using those terminologies because I've made videos on the past, but not really accurate, and increases triglycerides, which is a very bad thing for your cardiovascular health and longevity. And it also induces liver hepatotoxicity or hepatotoxicity, the liver part is hepatic. It is not good for your body. This is very clearly known and doesn't need to be researched beyond just looking at the material we have. When compared to even something like Anavar, it's hepatotoxicity far, far outweighs Anavar, which is an anabolic 17 alkylated steroid. It should, by all means, be safer. It's designed to be safer but it just doesn't end up being safer in the long run. And this is why it hasn't been approved for human use. So WADA, the World Anti-Doping Agency, banned it from their described use of performance enhancing drugs as they noted that this potential compound during its formulation could be cause for concern in its anabolic properties. Sure enough, it was being sold widespread on the internet for physique and performance enhancing purposes. Social media for sure played a large role in its production, manufacturing, and illicit selling because it's what social media people do. Look at my Toji video to learn more about that. But there is a lot of this shit out there, a lot of SARMs. The funny thing about this is, is, and I'm curious to actually see what the court says about this because it isn't going to be transdermally absorbed. And if it was, how did you get it near you in the first place? You would have had to have knowingly been around someone who had purchased this stuff. It's just not in any products and it never would be put in products because it's not approved for human use. No one's producing it outside of the chemical companies that are selling this shit online, which probably is fake in the first place. But then also to have enough of a concentration of the chemical in your urine to support having a positive test on two urine samples. Very, very hard to believe that that was just a small little, little amount transdermally absorbed on your skin. Is this a compound that I would recommend someone take who's looking for a bit of performance enhancing and curling? <laughs> no, uh, this isn't even something I'd recommend anybody take, to be honest. I think there's much better alternatives that are generationally used drugs that would be wildly more effective. Things like your typical Anavar, like I said, I think it would be much more effective, much harder to detect in urine if you know it's half-lives and elimination times and metabolite elimination times. This drug, just nonsensical. It's obviously someone who didn't do their research, didn't care to do their research, and just wanted to win and end up failing in the long run. Man, can you imagine if there was just a bunch of juiced up curlers throwing down that stone on the fucking icy highway of hopes and dreams, scrubbing away the top of the ice, trying to knock other people's stones away? It'd be crazy. It'd be really cool. I'm sure more people would watch it. Probably no one. <laughs> Probably no one. Maybe, sorry, I'm in Canada. I don't mean to offend. Maybe Canadians like this shit. I know in Minnesota, like there was three people or something that liked it. So it was around sometimes, but maybe, maybe you really like it. Okay. If you like this video, comment, like, and subscribe. And if you guys can do me the massive favor, really, I mean, seriously, subscribing does help this channel tremendously. And I'm asking you as a genuine human being, if you could help me grow this channel by just clicking the subscribe button, it would do me so much and more than you could probably even realize. And I thank you for it ahead of time if you've already clicked that button. But if you haven't, I really suggest clicking it. Clicking it. Um, clicking it. Okay, fine. Don't click it. But keep watching my videos at least. All right, watch this one or this one. One of these two.